And so, and you look at the uh, the bill about like anti dox doxing cops yeah, or what the that's fuck the next ever. One I got here. Which is basically like you can't. They, they don't want you to film police. The, the overall well, goal of it. Go ahead. Yeah. No. And so here, let me. I, I'll just because I'm gonna pull up. Like, so here's your shot, right? You're 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 taking your shot of, you know, banning people from protesting in meetings. Uh, an anti-doxing bill, which is just like a way to chill people from being able to record police officers literally the day after the uh, guilty verdict of Derek Chauvin for the, the murder of George Floyd, which was almost entirely uh, a thing because of capturing it on video. So now oh, it definitely was like the so initial now, Minneapolis report was like, we think he did die because he was sick. Right. <laughs> so it's like, so now, you know, 16, 1643 isn't trying to save George Floyd's life. It's trying to fucking stop you from holding the cops accountable. So again, so there's your shot. Here's your chaser. Uh, on a call with reporters, pro tem Greg Treat played one of the thousands of vicious calls his office received this week. It's completely despicable what people encourage people to do to come out and do this week without any basis in truth or knowledge. Uh, now, and, he, and it says here, seem to be implying this had to do with the bills regarding federal overreach. So this wasn't left wing provocateurs. This wasn't Antifa super soldiers raiding. This was fucking right wing fanatics calling a, the Republican pro tem of the Senate and leaving him like death threats and like you know, you're the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. So, like, the very thing they accuse the left of doing in public meetings where you can identify all of us, like, you know, I say us, you know, I don't go to meetings and shout swear words at people. I just don't think it's effective. But, you know, the people who are doing that, I don't knock them. They're mad and for justifiable reasons. But anyway, they go, whole face, public, back and forth, the Republicans, it's all like anonymous, like phone calls, and, and but like they do, they're even worse than the left. But we're not passing phone, laws saying you can't call your representative and leave them nasty messages or whatever. But like, this is what I mean. It's just such a ridiculous double standard. And then uh, Oklahoma Second Amendment Association President Don Spencer has rescinded his call for pr Senate Pro Tem Treat to be stripped of his leadership leadership position and apologized. So. The guy who led the charge, you know, the provocateur in chief of the right wing, issues some insane, misspelled, goofy, <laughs> called him pro temp treat. Uh, say like, ah, just kidding. I overreacted. <laughs> it's all good, guys. Go go back to what your regular schedule programming is. So I mean, it just shows that like, as much as they want to be mad at the left for getting up and shouting a couple slogans and saying, quit murdering people. The, the fucking right is mad because you won't pass a unconstitutional law preventing federal overreach. Like, uh, it's Completely so, dis such a ridiculous double standard. Yeah, it's disingenuous. And again, that's why all of this is illegitimate, right? It's completely disingenuous. Like, it's okay for, uh, and, and, and let's be clear about this. Like, the movement of, of George Floyd and, uh, and Black Lives Matter and all of the organizations um, is simply a movement for accountability, right? It, it, they're calling to have him pass some unconstitutional bullshit federal overreach law that, by the way, if there's anything we know about Greg Pete, if he could pass the bullshit, he would. Like, it's not like, it's not like Greg Pete is just like, middle of the road moderate guy right no. and oh by the way it you know he says vicious calls so it's one of the thousand vicious of calls we can only imagine the threats from second amendment nut jobs right like because you got to think about it and we talk about often about guns if you protesting for whatever and you marching through the streets it's a whole different protest if you marching through the streets with ar-15s Right. It's a completely different. You have even if you even if the protests were about the same thing about I don't get fucking no gluten. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. a whole different protest. If you marching about gluten and just saying uh, down with the gluten. Right. <laughs> Versus we're marching saying down with gluten AR-15s. And I, if, it, if it comes from Don Spencer, I don't know 
this to be true, but if I'm a betting man, you better believe there was some real, like, we're going to pull up with them things out conversations to, to uh, Mr. Treat that just doesn't happen on the left, right? And it's like, they're One, shouting at you. One, we'd all go to jail, but... <laughs> they're shouting at you. Yeah. They're shouting at you holding AR-15s, and you had this exact same issue in Michigan, right, when they stormed the Capitol. Oh. They want, like, again, whatever happened at the Capitol with, like, teachers... And they were holding signs saying, stop paying us starvation wages. What happened in Michigan with the right wing nut jobs, they stormed the Capitol with AR-15s and were uh, like hawking down, looking down at the legislatures in a threatening manner. Again, it's a whole different conversation when you hold an AR-15. Well, and a bunch of them are you know, like under investigation for federal conspiracy charges for like plotting to like capture and murder the governor of Michigan. I mean, like it wasn't like it wasn't like they just like sat around in a smoky room and just sort of got recorded saying some weird stuff. It's like they had actual plans to like if we can't capture, we're going to do public executions of random people. I mean, it was totally psychotic stuff. I mean, you just have to think about it. If it wasn't for DC's gun laws. What would the Capitol insurrection have looked like? Because we know all of those people, Oath Keepers, all those groups, they're used to walking around with their ARs, right? So what would it have looked like if D.C. didn't have the laws on the books that it has and they stormed the Capitol with guns? You know, again, it's a whole different conversation we'd be having after that. So it just shows the disingenuous nature of what they're saying. Like, you don't want these people to hold you accountable for the power that you're exploiting uh, to oppress people. Right. You don't want people feel like if you like if you film in a cop and the cop, no one films police officers w- yeah. when they're doing their jobs correctly. Like, right. no, like I don't like no one stops and films like, oh, oh look at him helping that old lady cross the road. Like, yeah, like no, <laughs> no one films police officers when they're doing their jobs correctly. But whenever they are abusing their powers. By the way, they work for us. They are state actors. We pay taxes. They work for us. We have a right to hold them accountable as best we can. And as best we can hold them accountable is whipping out these phones and showing this person, uh, this police officer is suppressing this person's rights, potentially murdering them in the name of the state, which is in the name of us. And I have a right to film that. Right. And so, again, it's about pressing being held accountable the police are some of the most they i mean they are the only entity in the state granted the power to kill there is no greater power than that well i mean i guess in jails if you think about the death penalty but um they have the power to take life we grant them that power as a society we can talk about whether or not we should there's a whole different conversation but um they are granted the right to take life is there any any entity that you m- want to be governed, uh, I don't want to say controlled, but l- like monitored more than an entity that you give the right to take life, right? So a cell phone ain't affecting this police officer's jo- wa- work at all, whether it's good or bad. So this is just about maintaining uh, the police's power to kill people and not be held accountable for it. The um, anti-protest bills are about protecting the right to mow down protesters who disagree with you. <laughs> um, and uh, the um, anti, uh, anti like disrupting uh, um, public bodies is just about the fact that they don't want individuals in there saying you are wrong for this. And so we have the right to hold you accountable as citizens. And this is how we're choosing to do this. It's not, and again, they're not in there holding AR 15s. So it'll be interesting whenever they, because inevitably like it, it's the beautiful thing you say, like shot and chaser is like inevitably because the right wing is so fucking crazy. This all comes back on them. So in a couple months or something, there's going to be some bill, I don't know, you know, anti mask or anti vax or uh, who the fuck knows something, something like absurd. And they're going to disrupt the meeting holding AR-15s. And he's like, okay, you got to arrest them now. Or, or, and we give prosecutors great discretion. Maybe they want to arrest them. Hell, in many small rural parts of this, of this state, the prosecutor might be in there with them holding AR-15. So, <laughs> like, wow. um, so, you know, all of this is just the goal to suppress our rights 
as citizens to hold power accountable. And the overall goal of that entire movement is to maintain the power of those who have it disproportionately rich white folks, right? <laughs> um, maintain their power by any means necessary. And the way that, that they need to maintain it now is suppressing speech, suppressing votes, suppressing democracy. 